Hey, Gulf County Giants family, your host, Eric Coffey, and today we're bringing you another exciting episode of the Gulf County Giants podcast. Today's guest, Molly Mayhew, founded her company, MTS, in 2017 after spending so many years as a subject matter expert supporting other private sector companies from business development to government sales, government senior sales manager, and she decided it was now time to go off and start her own business. And so she founded MTS in 2017, a systems integrator supporting federal, local, and state contracts. Today's episode, you're going to hear all of the wonderful things that Molly's working on. She's a mother of four, grandmother of four, and she is an avid Buckeye fan. So stay tuned for this upcoming exciting episode because we, so many of us, we know and we want to get into the IT space or the IT sector, or we're always thinking that it's too competitive and there's not enough opportunities out there because of the competent competition nature of IT. That is not the case. And so I want to share with you another story, bring another example of a woman who's a veteran who's coming into this particular space and she's making a headway. Stay tuned for this upcoming exciting episode with Molly Mayhew. I'm so excited to join. I'm Molly Mayhew. I, uh, the founder of Mayhew Technology Solutions. We're based out of Edmond, Oklahoma. Uh, we are a small business systems integrator that specializes in low voltage professional professional services and products and material a value added reseller uh, we're also sba 8a i'm okay. a service disabled veteran uh, we are in a hub zone i'm an economic disadvantaged woman on small business and then i'm also a dot disadvantaged business enterprise so mts checks all six federal tags uh, <laughs> for set asides but right. while i say that I lead with what we can do, what our capabilities are, how we execute, and then the set aside tags, of course, are the complement uh, that allow customers and prime contractors to leverage those set asides in order to meet small business uh, utilization goals. Nice, nice. Um, now, uh, your background, but actually, you said a lot there. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, Every time you said I had a question, I had another question, I had another question, I had another question. Um, 30 years wrapped up in that one statement. <laughs> that, it was very well said. I, <laughs> I, I love it. I, you know, but um, the, the first part of it that you stated was uh, when I asked the question originally about where do we learn these things? And you said how we were raised and are there, you know, what our, fam our parents taught us and our family and things like that. Did you come from an entrepreneurial family? No, I did not. Um, okay. I grew up in a small town in Ohio. Um, my dad was an insurance man and uh, my mom was a registered nurse um, okay. in a family of seven kids. So, wow. uh, but I am a competitor and my father was very competitive when okay. it came to sports and whatnot and in sales. So he was in sales. And, you know, uh, as I grew older, I'd met an individual that said, if your father can sell insurance to the level he does. Insurance is the hardest thing to sell. So obviously my father was successful as, a, as an insurance man. Right. And I believe that's where I got most of my talent, skills and uh, gift for gab. <laughs> no, no, I believe that. I think uh, we have to get comfortable selling ourselves and at least, like you said, selling your business and, and what right. you do and, and how you can add value to the government, right? And, and all your customers, not just the government, whoever your customer may be, whether it's a partner, right? right. Um, right. You know, and I tell people, even as you grow your organizations, we have to sell to our internal teams, right? Yes. We got to get them to buy in, right? That's important. That buy in is very important, um, internal and external. You're absolutely correct. Almost everybody's a customer or someone you're selling to, right? To, right. to achieve that buy in. Right, right. Absolutely. So tell us about, okay, you know, so little Molly, dad's insurance person, <laughs> uh -huh. right? I have a son and he never knew what I did like for a living. Right. And so did you really, did you, what do you think? But okay. I know his sales acumen, right. Fell upon you, but like, do you have any specific memories or stories that you can remember that identified? It was like, Hey, I think I'm like my dad. I say it every day. Um, he passed several years ago. And as I age, I see it. I kind of giggle both some personal, you know, little ticks and, and, and whatnot, some mannerisms and sayings. Uh -huh. uh, my dad was known for saying, you got to go with what you got. Uh, I say that a lot. Okay. Um, I think that's, that's how he lived his whole life, to be honest, raising seven kids um, in middle class uh, family and sending us all to Catholic school. 
um, which was, you know, quite expensive, still is quite expensive. So um, I was blessed to grow up in a small town, like I said, in Ohio, Lima, Ohio, go to Catholic school, be part of a Catholic community, uh, be in the sports. I was very uh, sports oriented. And so out of the six girls, one boy, I was the most athletic, or at least towards in my dad's eyes, the most, the most athletic. And he taught me, I think at an early age, which uh, set me up again, foundational, is I could do anything as well as a boy. Um, my neighbor next door used to sit outside on the driveway with this pipe and my dad would be firing the baseball at me, not a softball, a baseball <laughs> at me. And my youngest sister would be running in between because she was fast. And he'd just say, Stan, um, you're gonna take her head off one of these days. And my dad just fired back and said, nope, she'll catch it every time. And I mean, he threw it, no mercy. He, he rifled that ball at me and expected wow. me to catch it. Same thing with basketball. Uh, I excelled at basketball throughout my life and just a multi-sport player, right? But That's he had brilliant. me, encouraged me to be out there to be able to shoot from anywhere on the court with my eyes closed at any given time. So wow. 100, 100 shots a day, I'd be out there 100 shots a day. Get and I challenged myself to get a better percentage each time. You know, when, when can I achieve to make 100 out of 100? Um, so I spent a lot of time uh, trying to live up to my dad's expectations, taking that framework that he gave me as far as competition and, and, and success and, and, and self-achievement, not just necessarily everybody else's achievement, but what it meant to me to achieve certain goals. And I've used that throughout my life. I mean, it's just presented itself multiple times in life. And that foundation is so core to who I am and the direction I'm going. That's, that's, um, I could see that, right? I mean, I could see, <laughs> it, I mean, because again, when you talk about a hundred shots a day, right? That's dedication, right? Um, that's, you know, doing the things that you don't like repetitively, yeah. it's, you know, you get at it, right? Building a habit out of the things that you don't like. Right. I hear a lot of people talk about that, right? If you don't like something, make it a habit. <laughs> and so, um, and, I, and you know, even I can tell you uh, about myself, even like right now, one of the things I've been trying to drink more water. And it is so hard. And we all know we need to do it, right? And it's like, oh my gosh, how do you, how yeah. do people just drink only water? I go, I can't have Gatorade. Like, nope, just water. <laughs> it's just like, how do you start weeding yourself uh, off of sugary drinks um, to only water, right? And, and yeah. so, um, we both have the same challenge. I'm trying to do the same thing. So. Are you really? Yeah. yeah. I, it's, and it's, it's tough. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. I mean, I, I started off with watering down my drinks. Um, and then watering them down, watering them down uh, a little bit each week. So um, progressively. You got to go cold turkey. You got to go no, with no, 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 no. cold turkey. <laughs> no, 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 I can't, I can't. So, all right, well, no, that's great. Um, I, you know, a lot of, of small businesses do have those, hey, when I was a kid, you know, these, those types of habits. Uh, now, you, it was five years ago that you started your company. Is that correct? In late 2017, uh, I transitioned okay. from a large wireless customer and or um, business and and started the framework of MTS. Yes, we went operational in in 2018. Okay, now why at that time? Like, what out of all the years, what made it like? All right, 2017 is the year. I you know I'm gonna do it. I think it's I've spent the last uh, after the military, you know, 14 years, uh, mid 30s. I'd spent the next 20 years or so doing it for everybody else, helping other companies, both large and small, um, be successful, grow their government business. I didn't want to get to an age where I looked back and I had regrets, that what if regret <laughs> um, right. one day. And I had experience in building an 8A when I first got out of the military here in oh, Oklahoma. Yes. Okay. So I helped with that. So when it's successful and it's still successful today, and then I, you know, entered different industries and different verticals uh, because folks saw me here in, in, in the Oklahoma area as somebody that understood how to sell to government and somewhat of an expertise in the fact that I'm passionate about it. And I, I love talking about it. And more importantly, I love to help other people figure it out, especially small businesses. Right. right. So it just kind of grew from there across multiple verticals and industries, helping folks grow that to a point where it was time. I knew it was time. I put the right building blocks in place to be able to take that step uh, from a very successful career with a wire, like I said, with a wireless company and uh, step out and start my own business and haven't looked back. So. Wow. That's great. I love it. That's awesome. Uh, you said you mentioned that you love helping small businesses grow. 
Uh, tell us, um, you know, I, I know that as we become busy with our own lives, our own companies, right, it becomes harder to do that, to, to help other small businesses. Um, and I just want to make sure, I kind of want to put this out there because people will reach out to you. So uh, is there... <laughs> Let's set some ground. Let's set up some framework for like what that is, right? What does that look like? Hey, I can send you an email. Hey, I can, you know, what kind of people or companies? Uh, is it IT companies? Is it all small businesses? Is I mean, is there a specialty that you like that you like working with? Uh, is there any? Uh, is your, are you an expert in a certain field, right, of expertise, or just general small businesses? I think it's general small business, um, you know, at least to have that con that first conversation um, when you okay. meet folks and they they're either frustrated or they don't understand the language. And I've had to learn to de and de myself sometimes because we understand government business. The acronyms can flow and folks say, hey, you're talking a different language. And that <laughs> language is scary. Right. Yeah, and right. Some of the companies that I've helped, even large companies, didn't understand that how to government. Um, right. How do you get on a base? How do we get our salespeople onto an installation to talk to the customers? So I've learned that. Um, I sat on that other side of the desk at the end of my military career, uh, managing a large program um, out of Andrews Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. And I learned the process. So it, it, I was intrigued by it. And just like in my military career, I was a SME for my career field. I wanted to be a SME for how to sell to government. And I don't, I get, I think my biggest pleasure, of course, is contract wins, especially at the end of fiscal year. That's but right. um, it's really when you can sit down and help another small business. I'm, I'm passionate about helping women own small business. I'm that passionate right. about helping veterans and, and veterans in business, but veterans also that may not have gone after their service disabled uh, status, right? That's uh, mm. service connected. I'll take the time to help them or at least be that facilitator that gets them to the right resource. I love uh, connecting folks to the right resource. So I learned early on, maybe because I was blessed by mentors that came out of contracting at Tinker Air Force Base and, and some other folks that had years of experience with government contracting and that hands-on experience myself that, hey, I want to give back to other people. It's just who I am fundamentally to give back, pay it forward, um, do something nice for somebody today just because. So I think it kind of just incorporates itself as who you are fundamentally as a person. Yeah. And I think it's important to always give back to other folks. Oh, I, I agree totally. Um, um, that's probably one of, the, one of my biggest joys of my YouTube channel is reading the comments that people post every single day. I mean, almost every hour, a couple hours, uh, you know, thank you for this video. This helped me in this way. This, you know, this shed some light on this topic, things like that. Uh, you know, I have not going back to, you said SME. Can you tell people the acronym? Please? <laughs> SME, a uh, subject matter expert. That's so right, I did, right. so, you know, I did spend 14 years in the, in the military and like Air Anthony Force. Lawson, Air, Air Force, Force. Okay. came from Andrews Air Force Base as my last, um, as my last uh, assignment, he and I just recently connected about six months ago. Fantastic guy. Uh, I think we've got some good things that we're going to announce here soon together. Um, but, you know, I did the Air Force. I became a subject matter expert. And that started 14 years prior. I was put into a career field, did high frequency communications, command and control, wanted to be the best. Grew up as a, I say, I'm a SAC baby. Uh, the strategic air command before it went away and the air force evolved into other things. Right. right, right, right. Um, so that command was very strict. And, and the, again, the word foundation, you had to have the foundation to be su successful in my first two years of the air force as an airman before the, the commands went away, the structure went away and changed itself. But I became the system expert. I became the operational expert for a system that went through a $35 million DOD consolidation program. So we took 14 high frequency sites around the world, both Air Force and Navy, and centralized them into Andrews Air Force Base. I got thrown into the mix of the, of the uh, program by raising my hand and telling a, a bunch of engineers and, and uh, contractors that the system didn't work the way they just said it did on the whiteboard. And from raising that hand, I went into the world of program management, um, system configuration, first article test. Uh, schoolhouse training um, to to train the schoolhouse kids on a new system and the new new policies, new procedures. So it just opened up this whole other world that, again, you know, 
had I not raised my hand, I probably maybe wouldn't be here today, but it's that foundational step that just continues to build on itself and bring me to where I am today. Wow, that's great. So lesson learned, raise your hand. <laughs> raise your, well, in the military, you're told not to raise your hand. Ah, but, um, you in know, the military, you're told not to raise your Okay. Well, to do volunteer, you know, don't take additional duties is mm. what your, some supervisors told me through the years, but I didn't listen to them because each one of those additional duties, uh, whether I like doing it at the time or not, set me up somewhere down the line that it came back full circle and right. it helped me in the next stage or another stage of my career. So okay. um, I'm not a big believer in not raising my hand. I've done it since I was little and I'll continue to do it, you know, until I'm not here anymore. So I'm an action kind of person. I'm a take action kind of person and uh, raising my hand again is just fundamental to who I am. When small businesses are talking to you and they're frustrated, one first thing is, do you have, and I have not been able to find a resource for the acronyms. Do you, <laughs> I, somebody even asked me for, I'm like, I don't know. And I'm like, I, I, I don't want to make it. I'm like hoping someone can tell me where to go get it from so I can just buy it and like, here, here's the resource for all the acronyms. People ask me. There all is the time. one out there. There I'm is sure. one out there. Let me try to find it. I used to okay. have one. Um, I created one for folks. Okay. Um, I can see if I, and then I'll share it with you if I can find it. But yeah, share it with me, and I will put it publicly everywhere, all over. Because people, <laughs> the acronyms are the scariest thing. <laughs> people ask me all the time, and yeah. I don't, I just don't have the time to make one. But yeah. I would love if someone had one. I, I assume someone had to have made this somewhere, even if it's for sale. At least, you know, make it available to us, so then we could share it with folks out I'm there. I'm taking a note because okay. I've seen Thank one, you, I've created one. <laughs> see, so that's it. See, you can help. You're helping us already. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing now uh all right so you decide all right i'm gonna step out i'm gonna start my business what's the first thing that you do well again, I, I'm incorporating obviously you incorporate yes. to get registered right <laughs> all that stuff. yeah i've done this before and there were a couple lessons learned so you know part of it is you learn um hey i've done this for everybody else and then you go do it for yourself and and you make a couple of mistakes or yes. decisions that you thought you knew better until it's your company and, and you make them anyways. So That's what I was gonna, I was gonna say that. Well, <laughs> I was getting to that because, you know, my friends that work, uh, I had a friend of mine, cause I saw it on your, uh, your site, Tech Data, but I had a friend of mine and he left, he started his own business. He said, you know, Eric, the sales guys that I used to call me all the time when I was working for the company, they stopped calling me when I was my company. And then I'm trying to call them and they don't pick up my phone calls. They don't return. So tell us, Molly, how different is that now that you're okay, you're out there. You start MTS. Now, what do you do? Well, I had a plan. Um, it took me several months to create that plan. So again, I knew what set aside tags I could uh, capture fairly quickly um, to set off and go, go after that set aside business, both as a prime and a potential subcontractor. So my first order of business is I am a hundred percent service disabled veteran. So I have that income coming in every month and had the ability to live on that income while I took this step. Um, but I also believed to supplement my income. I did some small business consulting. So help some folks understand the government space to bring in some of that additional income in order to grow the company, as well as reinvest a little bit of the money to grow the company. It's almost the same model from 1998 when I helped another uh, small business start here. We both got out of the Air Force and started a successful 8A company and almost took that same model. Pay yourself enough to get by in life and then take the extra money and reinvest it into the company to build it. Yes. So I was able to do that for the first year, capsule capture two contracts. I knew I was going to go into low voltage uh, because I came from the wireless industry. So my first contract was actually guest Wi-Fi down at um, the Central Texas VA. So we were able to do that and then do some audio visual out at the Air Force Base here locally. So okay. those two contracts set the foundation for the first year. They were at the end of the fiscal year, rolled into my second year of business, and the contracts just continued to grow. I developed a relationship with the customers. We got some modified contract work, but we also began winning additional type of work for various customers. Mm. And some of that too was, hey, I'm back in the industry. I'd been kind of away from the federal space for several years, trying to get back out there, re-engage my network, take advantage of who I know. And honestly, that first contract was a lesson learned that I thought I'd be able to avoid the lesson. But again, uh, a challenge was presented and it had to be overcome in order to be successful on that first contract and 
be profitable by the time it was over with. So, yeah, that's, I think that's so, um, so many of us, we forget about profits, right? right. Because in order right. to stay in business, you have to make a profit, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. You can't just win contracts. That doesn't keep you in business. You have to, I always tell people, you have to actually deliver, perform, and make a profit all at the same time. Yes. And I just responded to a survey a couple of weeks ago from, I think, one of our mutual friends. And she had said, what, what was your first contract? Did you make a profit? Or is it acceptable to lose money on your first contract? And I absolutely unequivocally said, none, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And right. so she reached out to me. We had a dialogue. And while I understand that other folks have experienced that, have lost money on their first contract, I'm requirements driven, you know, um, process driven. So I love to pick apart a contract and that's how I can help small businesses as well is pick apart a contract, find all the shells, right? Taught back in the day, find that's all the shells in the, in the contract. Right. <laughs> back in the day. Listen, and if it says shall, you've got to do it. <laughs> Molly, can you, can you explain that in depth for people? So it just doesn't, I don't want to miss that point because that's such a critical thing that, um, I don't, I don't think I've said it in the last six months. So it's great that you brought that up. So let's talk about it. Yeah, it's, you know, and some people call it shredding a statement of work, shredding a contract. Um, I know there's computerized versions, but I get a lot of joy in doing it uh, old school by hand and taking my uh -huh. highlighter. And my first draft of the contract, I always go find the word shall. In today's technology, you can convert it to word if it's not in word and go do a find and <laughs> find the word shall and mm -hmm. highlight them because those are firm requirements of the government. When the word says shall, it's not a maybe, it's not an if, it's not a oops, I forgot. You're going to be evaluated on each one of those shall requirements. And then the rest is all just, you know, additional info to help explain the scope of work, the requirements and what the customer's expectation is. And that's before you even get to the uh, FAR requirements and all the compliance requirements. So right. those are just as important to understand if the contract's going to be taxed, um, the, the small business participation, um, if it's a set aside, the 50% rule, right, on a set aside contract, if it goes over the simplified acquisition threshold. And I could go on and on, but uh, I get a lot of joy out of doing that. I find a lot of pleasure out of doing that. And as the business owner, uh, especially being so, so small still, and we're just starting our fifth year, is, is I will continue to read those contracts for those requirements because ultimately, it stops with me. If we miss a requirement, ultimately right. it's my responsibility. Right, right, right. No, I agree. I agree. Uh, um, thank you for that. That was. I hope that was more. That was helpful. No, it was absolutely. Like I said, I mean, this is something that I think. Um, <laughs> someone said to me that the the best thing about church is that they reiterate the same things over and over again. And so I think that this needs to be reiterated because, you know, not, you know, you may not know, but uh, throughout my time of interviewing people, these things are not always said. And so when it's repeated, it's like, okay, great. I'm glad someone brought that up again because I forget. And I, and a lot of times I take things for granted. And so it's great when someone like, like yourself can bring up these, I forgot the way you said it, but like this old, the old rules, the old truths, Yeah, yep. <laughs> right? The old school of doing things. <laughs> there you go. The old school of doing things back in the day. So I love back that. in the day, back in the day. So uh, that's great. Thank you for that. Uh, now you, you came in, became an expert uh, in low voltage. You start pivoting some other things. When did the 8A come along or come about? So I was able to get all the other tags in 2018, primarily 2018. And then 2019, uh, the day after Thanksgiving, I was approved by the SBA for my 8A. Okay. So we've, uh, we're have we just going into finishing our second year as an 8A right. and uh, looking forward to some direct awards here at the end of the year that I'm finalizing around this uh, podcast, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> by Thursday, and then um, seeing what else we can do uh, utilizing that A. 8A status, as well as my other set aside statuses, a lot of work with the VA as a SDV OSB. So right. it's the key is how can you take those set aside categories and leverage them, but at the same time, make sure you have successful past performance. You're executing on the requirements, you're delivering a solution that the customer needs and is meaningful, and then pulling that all together, both the set aside and the past performance in order to continue to grow the company and uh, earn the right to win customers' business. What time did you wake up today? Uh, 1 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> what woke you up? What woke you up? <laughs> um, 
the military girl in me is still there. So when my phone bings at 1 a.m., I'm a military and mother, right? I'm a mother of four. So, um, and even though they're all grown, I still worry about them. Um, so at 1 a.m., when I heard the bing, I read the email, and there's an opportunity to close a last minute deal. Uh, right. direct award so right. i was up and i was moving and reading the requirements and you still made it to the podcast thank you still made it to the podcast <laughs> it's gonna be a great monday that's right you know i, I mean i think it's very easy for people to make excuses so uh but i know we know molly mayhew is not one for excuses <laughs> not, <laughs> not, <today>. practicing, <laughs> not practicing 100 <laughs> shots a day of basketball that's <laughs> do you still play sports um, unfortunately, I can't with some of my service connection and, you know, oh, age related things, but uh, I gotcha. played basketball in high school and played in the military. I was put okay. in um, the Hall of Fame a couple of years ago before my dad passed, thankfully. Really? So he was able to share in that. Uh, I think it was just as much his award as it was mine. So um, love sports. I've played everything. I bowled on the Air Force teams uh, at bases. I played softball. I played basketball. Um, so always, always competing and always wow. working. Wow, Molly, that's that's pretty incredible. D tell us some other things that uh, you share. In, uh, it, you know, I mean, I could ask more about yourself, but I'm curious about the small businesses. Some other things that small businesses that you've run across, uh, things that you that you recommend or that you've recommended in the past, or maybe a book or, or something to watch or something to share. What are some other things that you that you regularly share with small businesses? You know. Um... I've heard on several of your other podcasts, and I think it's a commonality amongst the small business folks is uh, the line of credit and how to fund your business. Yes. No matter where you start from, eventually, if you win a contract or two, you're going to have to fund it somehow. And it was one of my first lessons learned. Again, having done this for so many other folks and um, you know, being able to generate some income for myself was how could I fund a, at this particular time, my first contract of $70,000 worth of equipment. And the subcontractor partner, mentor partner had suddenly said, hey, we can't, we can't do that for you. So you're gonna have to figure out how to buy that equipment for this first contract. Wow. Um, after initial shock, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, took the let, or I took the opportunity to again, re continue to re-engage my, my network. And I reached out to some folks in the distribution community, honestly, Annexter Federal out of the DC area. And uh, somebody who I'd worked with before, um, Bright Riley, who I'd worked with at a wire and cable manufacturing company years before, 10 years before. So here mm. I am and I'm saying, hey, I have this challenge. You know, I started my small business. Is there a way you can help? And he immediately... Uh, took our long-term relationship, you know, my reputation in the industry, presented my challenge to his boss, and they met the challenge for me. They went ahead and gave me a line of credit. We were able to get the equipment, able to get the contract uh, executed, and still be profitable. So uh, sometimes it's not what you know, but who you know, and then those relationships, those long-term relationships that you've established through the years, reach out to them. Most people are willing to help. And uh, I just happened to be lucky enough to have that button to push when I needed it. Oh, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's great. Uh, so line of credit and funding yes. for the business. That's super important. It, it, I, like you said, I think that some of the people who have not done this yet believe that that's an initial challenge, but I've seen that that challenge continues at every single yes. level, because even when we're doing, uh, you know, you think, Hey, I did whatever, 5 million in sales. You know, well, you want to do seven million next year, right? Or eight million? Well, that's going to take funding to support that. Yes, that yes, that growth. Um, and the requirements to be funded for seventy thousand are different requirements to be funded for seven hundred thousand. Right, never <laughs> so again, goes away. That doesn't go away, right? So the challenges <laughs> never go away. You have to learn how to navigate that element of the business. Uh, so on that same topic, what are some things that when you started the business? were hard, but now they've become much easier than when you first started. Well, the line of credit, the relationships, um, yeah. just as important today as I've grown to establish a relationship with the right bank. Um, and a bank that's used to dealing with small businesses, the SBA, understands what it takes to do government. I'm blessed to do that. I've uh, partnered with Arvis Bank here locally. They get the government. I think they're the number one or two lender, SBA lender in the state. What is I it? have a phenomenal Same lender. Arvest? Arvest. Arvest Bank. A-R-V-E-S-T. Yes, sir. Okay. They've helped me pivot 
in the last year and a half since I've moved to them in multiple directions. There's a team of five or six, and it's just anytime I may ask a question, I have a new resource and they're responsive and they're willing to, to take what they know, not just in banking, but also in the government space and see where they can help MTS in terms of growth, lines of credits, uh, SBA loans. I'm going through that process now. Okay. Um, you know, and then the SBA, it's important to keep in contact with the SBA and have a good relationship with your local SBA office. I'm part of the Emergency Leaders Program right now. I have my final presentation in, in a week, but that program in and of itself, the Emerging Leaders Program has helped me understand some things that I needed to understand better as a business owner, not necessarily how to sell to government, but as a business owner, lines of credit, how people look at my financials. I may look at them one way, but how does the outside world look at my financials when they ask for your profit and loss statements and your balance sheets? What do they see in terms of, hey, we'd like to partner with MTS or, or we'd like to extend your line of credit or any other reason to do business with you? So I've learned how to read those statements and what they mean to other folks. And I think that opened up a whole different world to me in the last three or four months during this program uh, to make me take a, look, a harder look at my balance sheet, a harder look at my profit, profit and loss statement and how I can improve some things to help MTS be seen as a strong small business partner. Uh, that's great. Uh, a lot of uh, my previous guests went through that emerging leaders program. That seems to be a another common denominator. Um, it is. When, it's a wonderful they, program. Yeah, when they first qualify, whenever they become eligible to go, that's something that we highly recommend for people to do. I agree. I yeah. make that same recommendation. I'm almost done with it and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Now, you, you said you won your first contracts, but where did you have the past performance to get that contract? Or was it not required? My subcontractor had the past performance and low voltage. So um, we creatively we're able to roll that in and you utilize it in the response to meet the response and the requirements. That's excellent. That's, that's, a, that's another great, just so that, you know, those are things that people ask a lot. Okay. Those are great. So when you're out and you're sharing the word, that's a great point to help shed for small businesses out there because so many people, like you said, they don't have the previous past performance. They're like, okay, how do I get started? I don't have past performance. It's like, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg. <laughs> and I'll also share something that I recently learned this past week, I, and I don't have it yet, but there were some new clarifications that the SBA put out on rules uh, back in November of 2020. I encourage everyone to go look those up. I have a couple of them from, a, I interviewed Calero Marza, the attorney who represents okay. small, small businesses, and, they, and one of the rules and is exactly what you just said, that now, and it's important for not just for you and I to know it and for small businesses, but other for contracting folks to know, because these things are changing all the time. And uh, what the, the the representative, the attorney from Plera Marshall said is that contracting officers, if they don't know the rules, they could get, potentially get in trouble because the contracts are violating the new rules that the right. SBA created. Right. One of those rules happens to be that they cannot prevent you from using your subcontractor's experience as credible experience. Yes. And yes. that's actually a rule that was put in place. That's been, that was like, it was already, I, guess, I think it already existed, but they clarified it, that rule in that those new regulations that went out. So those, those new regulations really, um, they made it easier for small businesses to, to break into this marketplace and to kind of get their foot off the ground. I think so too. And, and, you know, there's always ways to be creative to address the mail and in, in a solicitation or a statement of work. It's created to, creativity while staying legal and compliant yes. is key to winning. And while I started as a prime um, and most folks start as a subcontractor, I have started as a prime, 99% uh, of my business is as a prime contractor. And I'm helping some local women owned and, and veterans who are subbing to me get their first subcontract, right? So, right. and talking them through that process is, hey, now you'll have verified past performance. Right. And on some of the larger bids, I do believe one of the new rules is uh, the prime contractor, uh, the CPARs, right? Is subcontractors yes. can have CPARs. So I think that's that helps as well establish newer business or a small business that might not have a lot of past performance, enter into it, start to build that past performance roadblock in order to be more credible, more viable, and move towards that prime contractor role. Right. I agree. I think, and um, like I said, I, I haven't read all the rules, but those, 
that stuck out to me there. Uh, one other thing that I know is that you did, you set up a couple of joint ventures. Um, yes. Have you worked through those or is that just something that's new that you're doing? I've got a couple. Um, one is specifically for STARS-3, the oh. joint venture, waiting to hear if we're in the next cohort. Uh, I think that'll come out by the end of the year. Okay. Uh, looking for some good news there. Um, the others are based on business and how to do business. And sometimes you set up a joint venture uh, in hopes that the business will come to that joint venture. And sometimes right. it doesn't. So I've got some new ones in play. I am also well-versed in the SBA mentor protege uh, program and recommend that to folks. Um, if it's the right fit, right. Is to find that right mentor. And again, one of those, one of those things you learn is I've done this a long time and I'm entering into my second mentor protege. My first one didn't, it wasn't quite the right fit. And we didn't right, realize right. that until we danced together and um, it just didn't fit. And we weren't on the same path and going down the same direction. So I'm excited to soon announce my second mentor protege nice. uh, agreement and a new joint venture. And I think um, it's exciting and uh, you'll recognize some of the folks when that gets announced and uh, some good things moving forward for MTS the mentor, um, our new joint venture, as well as the one for STARS 3 in 2022. So I'm excited. Uh, can't wait for it to get here, but we've got some work to get through the next couple of days before some of that can come to fruition. So congratulations. I'm wishing much. Thank success. you. Yes. Um, and again, I, you know, I did my research, but we'll, we'll wait for you to make your <laughs> official announcement. So. I'm sure you probably know. <laughs> of and, course um, I do, but I just, I, Hey, listen, I don't want to spoil the surprise. I'll wait for your official announcement. So. I couldn't pick a better mentor yeah. this second time around. My first mentors, they were great. And, you know, they got me through that first critical year of, right. of, of establishing a company, having some wow. processes put in place, being a subcontractor to me, taking their past performance and building up on that. I wouldn't be where I am today without my first mentor. It just sometimes you can maintain that friendship, but it's just not the right fit for you, any, either of us in, in terms of a business relationship. Do you... Uh, on staying on topic with that mentor, uh, they say that the 8A program has a very like, okay, let's 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 go thirty thousand level. Okay. Um, Seventy five thousand small businesses qual or qualify for any the social economic categories. Two third of them will never get government contract business. What do you think? How do you think we can help that two thirds of the people who would never? get business to, to not maybe not all of them <laughs> but how do we help you know how do we help 10 percent of them 15 percent, 20 percent of them what is the mentoring thing is that one is that a key element to it right what, do you think that would help them i think mentoring as a whole whether it's the formal mentor protege program or mentoring as a whole i've had in my entire life especially in business is key especially right. mentors who have been there done it walk the walk talk the talk have not just been successful but they've also had They've learned from mistakes or decisions, you know, and lessons learned, that experience. I think they can help you from being a sounding board on some of the things you want to do. Uh, in my case, I was lucky enough to have the assistance from a contractual standpoint, aligned with the contractual, and then the operational standpoint. So I think the mentor protege, if you can find the right mentor, but there's also, if you hear from the community, some folks that say, hey, this mentor protege it's not a mutual give and take. So again, I'm blessed with the second one. I think it's going to found a phenomenal mentor, Air Force veteran, yep. successful business owner, yep. and um, not only just a successful business person, but just another person that aligns with who I am. They're, they call to see how it's going. They ask the questions. They're compassionate. They give back. Uh, veteran focused and proven employees lives focused and he's very family a uh, family focused and all of those things line up with Molly Mayhew so I think in tandem we're going to do some phenomenal things and uh, again I'm excited for the time we get to announce it here in about 30 days all right what else uh, other things for another for small businesses that are hey they're they're have a low likelihood chance of success how what other things can we do to help them succeed or whatever things that you've seen that's maybe worked or things that worked for you that you could would recommend to them? I think PTACs can help if you get the right PTAC um, and, and pick their brains. I think some of the trainings there go a long way. Um, 
the SBA has their trainings, the PTACs have their trainings. Finding another small business that has some time to mentor you, whether they're your formal mentor or not, being part of communities on LinkedIn and I like that one. following your podcast. I mean, I'm so thankful that I've seen it because again, I've watched several of them and I have more scheduled to watch because there's nothing to me that is more valuable than listening to somebody who's experienced something similar, walk down that path and sometimes humble enough to share their lessons learned, their successes. Hey, I should have done this better. Hey, this is where I came from. This is where I am now. It takes a lot of humility for a successful business person to sh open the book and say, hey, let's not make the same mistakes or share it in your podcast. So other people starting out have that resource and uh, have that information that could help them or prevent them from making that same mistake. Right. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. I, you know, I learn a lot that, and that's what I was telling you in the beginning. I mean, I've learned so much at, put it this when I first started this podcast I didn't know what capture management was <laughs> <laughs> seriously I mean that's one of those words yeah. that yeah. it's you don't find capture manager widely used in English yeah. language yeah. Yeah. outside of government outside um, of government yeah. and I didn't know what a capture manager was and that's just one of the very beginning initial examples of things um so all right that was great uh, I, th I think that, that those are all really good good points to make I love you're telling us where you're going, what you're working on. That's, that's, that's awesome. Uh, let's, uh, you know, you mentioned the, sometimes people say things about the formal mentor project program. I've heard KOs warn small businesses about joint ventures with large entities. Do you have any other precautionary things that small businesses should look for? I mean, I've heard those or, same things. I, I think you've got to go into a mentor project with eyes wide open and, and realistic expectations. It's not going to be the end all fix all and large businesses in, you know, in business and been, you know, been successful based on the fact that they understand the government world. They have those capture managers. They have those BD professionals. They have that strategic plan to incorporate small businesses. Why? Because they have to, right? right. Once you win a certain value of a contract, there's a small business plan that has to uh, come into play. And I really like um, to go off a little topic here is I'm seeing more and more of an accountability for those small business plans, not just, hey, we have them, we won the award. Really? So, you know, are we going to go use them? I'm seeing some accountability coming into play and some of it's being incentivized in order to meet certain small business categories on very large contracts. So I've been pleasantly surprised to see that. That's um, great. starting That's great. that curve starting to happen. Right. And I'm right. hoping that the government and the contracting world, the officers, contracting officers continue that trend to uh, enforce the small business utilization, not just on paper, but in actuality and in implementation. No, that's, that's great. I mean, I, I, that's huge for a small business, because like you said, having uh, historically, there has not been a lot of enforcement right. um, and accountability. So that's a, well, that's and, you, a and you spend the time and you spend the resources as a small business, you get a little excited. And while you might be on the winning team, you may never get any work. You're right. just on the winning team. So, right. you know, it's, it's picking your partners wisely. It's understanding the requirements. Again, it's all a process. And I think if a small business can identify what that process is, who's your customer? What are the requirements? I was trained in the science of solution selling. And through that, what are their pain points? You know, the cliche statement, what keeps you up at night? But there's some truth to that question. And those are pain points. So become that person, become that small business that can answer your customer's pain points with a viable solution that's meaningful. It's meaningful, it's future-proofed, and it meets their budget, right? So, and then go execute on it. Once you build trust with that customer that you're trying to understand what they do every day and what some of the challenges they have are, then you become a viable resource to them. And in turn, as the relationship grows, you become a trusted resource. And we all like to go to people who we trust, right? It's just human nature. So when you understand that, understand your customer, understand the requirements, address your capabilities towards those requirements, then 
and then be patient. A lot of small businesses <laughs> don't realize it can take up to 18 months to win your yes, first contract. Yes, yes. And I've had so many people through the years go, oh my goodness, you were right. It took just about that, you know, 12 to 18 months. Yes. It doesn't happen overnight. So be patient, stand in, keep making it happen and give it time because once you win your first, your first contract, the rest will come. Yes, 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 yes. I, I, um, I love that. And I second that. You've said something, science solution selling. Yes. So the wireless company I work for um, had a program, sales program based on the science of solution selling, Axiom. And it's a process-oriented uh, sales approach. And I am a process-oriented person. So it, uh, it spoke to me the minute that I was presented with it. And uh, actually was successful enough that I was their icon winner for two years in a row. <laughs> um, they kept putting me up for the competition to go utilize that sales process in order to do mock sales ups right in front of 500 people and then uh, be claimed the winner. The competitor in me is like, let's go. It's just a process. Let's go tackle. Let's knock it out. But in the course of that, learning that process so well, it helps you walk through customer needs, identifying uh, what they do, identifying their pain points and their challenges, and then mapping your solutions, your services, your products to that customer like a building block and uh, be able to deliver a meaningful solution to them. I like that. I like, you actually just gave me some great ideas. <laughs> Uh, you gave me some great ideas. I like that. Um, that's good. Let's uh, let's switch topics since we're wrapping up here. Uh, happiest purchase that you've made recently for Amazon? Happiest purchase. <laughs> okay, my, you tell me a recent purchase from Amazon. My U.S. flag that's now installed in my front yard in the flagpole. Oh, from Amazon. From Amazon. Okay. All right. Cool. How big is the flag? It stands about twenty foot up in the air. I got to let the roof line protect it with the winds out here in Oklahoma. Amazon sold you a 20 foot high flag. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How do they put Got a box in it covered. It was quite the big box, but I'm happy it's installed. I'm happy it's installed. I'm, I'm proud to have a, a, a flag in my, in my front yard. I mean, I am a veteran. I am a patriot. So right. Right. Um, there's nothing better than to drive up and see my flag. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Early riser or burning the midnight oil. I'm, I'm both. And I won't say, unfortunately, both. I can That's be 24 both. hours. I'm better in the mornings because, you know, there's something just special about getting up before most people do and knocking out two or three hours before the world gets crazy. It allows you to set your day, identify your day. Uh, and some of those important things to do on my to-do list, I still use an old school to-do list. It's easier to do before the rest of the world wakes up. Now, when you say... Uh, your to-do list is that a journal style to -do list it is, is like, i have a book a notebook and notebook yeah my little my little squares that have my to-do list yep and i check i would have been off taking notes the whole time <laughs> there's not to me there's there's just a, a satisfaction of taking your pen and checking off the item my my little square check All right. it's done and moving on and then mm -hmm. it's there always as a reference back to something whether it's a conversation task that i needed to get done and the various notes that I may have, it allows for continuity, right? Continuity and flow. At the end of the year, I know that Bill Gates takes a couple of weeks to reflect how his year went. Do you do that um, quarterly or at, annually where you reflect on how the year went and things that you accomplished? And do you do anything like that? I've told myself I'm going to start. And of course, COVID kind of put a yeah. uh, hitch in that. Right. Um, I, I did make myself go on vacation. It was four days to the beach and it was wonderful. And I pretty much shut down and, and just checked emails once a day, which is odd for me. Um, I'm a 24 seven person, right? I think most military folks are, and most business people are if, if needed. So it was nice to take those four days, um, had some family join me at the beach. And my plan is, um, here in the last quarter after the end of the fiscal year, is to take two weeks. Um, I'm going to go home, see my sisters, and uh, then I'm going to Maryland for a Mission 22 event and veteran, veteran suicide. So MTS has sponsored that. I'm going to join the Colossal family at a great event 
And while I can't do the 22 push-ups, I'll be there supporting everybody that is that is doing the 22 push-ups an hour in recognition and support of uh, you know veterans and, and suicide awareness. I like it. I love it. I love it. Odd place or job that you've worked at that no one would ever guess. <laughs> um, you laugh. You had, something, you had something come good because you had a, you laugh. You chuckled. I mean, I did ice cream. I a uh, little local ice cream store when I was younger, people probably wouldn't have expected. I mowed yards from the time I was seven years old and could push a mower, uh, papers. My brother gave me a quarter to carry the bag for the paper route when I was younger. And just because I wanted to hang out with my brother, I carried this huge paper bag while he made the $5 or whatever he made a route, I got a quarter for it. <laughs> <laughs> so your brother was the entrepreneur, huh? He was the capitalist. <laughs> He, he really was when I was younger and, you know, I just wanted to follow him around. And I mean, down to quarters for, you know, we have weed eaters now, those scissors you used to edge your lawn with. I'd be out there while he was mowing and I'd get a quarter to, to do the hard edging part. But wow, a quarter great. was a quarter back then. You go down to the candy store and buy 25 pieces of penny candy. <laughs> right. No, a quarter. Yeah. A quarter is, you know, it meant a lot. It's a lot of money. That's funny. Something that you have to do in business that you don't like. Like a, a job, accounting, HR. Accounting. Um, I don't like the accounting part. It's numbers. It's numbers crunching. Now I love the number results, but accounting is is a challenge for me every day. Right. So you, I'm sorry, you, you you have a third party vendor that handles that, or a bookkeeper. You don't have. You, yeah, I do, part. and and it's growing and going to be outsourced to support that growth with what's coming in 2022. Right. No, you're going to need it. <laughs> you're gonna yeah. need it. I can I can anticipate, <laughs> especially if you if you're on Stars Three, you're gonna. So that's gonna be massive. I hope so. Yeah, no, that's, One that's of, the first of many uh, IDIQ GWACs that I want to be on. We're, we're entering into our fifth year. It's yep. time to start go capturing those right. IDIQs and those GWACs. Yeah, no, I great. That's uh, can you for the people that don't know what IDIQ GWAC? Can you just two minutes on it? So IDIQ acronym indefinite. The, I, again, I, indefinite I know what you mean. You know, I, I caught you say the acronym. So yep. that's why I would do. GWAC, uh, government wide acquisition, right? Contract. So agency level, uh, national level contract vehicles, usually multi vendor, right? And they're competed. So when you go present it to your customer, if you're awarded onto an IDIQ or a GWAC, Vets2, STARS, SOUP, there's so many out there, right? IAS, uh, CIOS P4 is coming out. Polaris is supposed to be coming out if they can get past some of the, the hurdles um, on the government side. But uh, you have to earn the right to, to get on that contract, right? The right pricing, the right past performance, the right partners. And then it's to me, it's a tool. And that's what I tell small businesses. Once you get those tools in your pocket, it lets you go shop that to your customer and becomes an avenue for your customer to get to you. The pricing's already competed. They already know what your pricing is. You utilize the contract vehicle in a way to say, hey, here's how I can help you. Let me help, let me help you with what you need. And here's how you can do it with an already competed contract vehicle, if that makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Books that you recommend. I do a lot of fiction just because it takes my way, my life, <laughs> uh, my mind away from from the world uh, for a day. But again, I like the Lou Holtz book. Again, um, a, a coach. I like Lou Holtz. To read Lou Holtz. Um, right. I, well, I grew up a Buckeye fan. I still am a Buckeye fan in the middle of Sooner Nation. And um, then because I'm Catholic, Notre Dame was second. So when they played each other, if they ever played each other, it was the Buckeyes first, and then Notre Dame for everything else. And uh, I, I despise that team up north. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Lou Holtz. I didn't guess that one. Oh, he's such a great motivational speaker. And I didn't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know from the football field, but I didn't know about the book itself. Yeah, he has a book. Um, I can't think of the title, but it's sitting over there on my desk. And then I, I like process-oriented books, how to learn from folks. And um, okay. I think we're for the emerging leaders, we read Duct Tape, Mar Duct Tape Marketing. I know that. And that's one. another thing where I've got to get better at, at marketing for the company. So that book's going to help me try to build that marketing plan and uh, get some exposure for the company, especially as we continue to excel and succeed and execute. And because I want to respect your time, I know it's the end of the fiscal year, some parting words for the audience. First of all, utilize this podcast resource. Again, I've watched them. I'm so thankful to be invited to one. I hope I've imparted some information. Reach out 
to folks like us that are willing to take the time, willing to help, willing to learn, and then go on LinkedIn and find out who we're connected to, because those people probably are going to be able to be a resource and help as well. Know your, know who you want to be in the, in the contracting world, build the services and the product plan, identify who your customer base is and what their needs are, and then marry it all up and go execute. I love it. I actually, uh, as a continuation from what she said about the LinkedIn and doing my research today on you, I actually found a lot of people that I did not know uh, going through your LinkedIn and people that you like. And so you'll see, I'm not stalking, but just see, I like start uh-huh. liking a lot of stuff that you like. Cause I mean, it's very, I mean, we're in the same space and, um, yes. and a lot of it, and there were people that are doing things that are uh, service, third-party service providers um, that I really liked what they were sharing. And I liked, and you liked it and it made sense to me. Yep. Even um, there's a post by Kimberly Yates, which I know Kimberly Yates uh, very well that I had not read that post. And I got so few likes, but I mean, it was a fantastic post. I'm going to reshare that with my audience. There's so much information on LinkedIn as people begin to use it. I'm one of the earlier followers of LinkedIn. Mm. I had to avoid companies telling me what my LinkedIn had to look like completely because um, I grew to, you know, the 500 followers pretty quickly. And and I could say in the beginning that I physically uh, had met those first 500 followers or had spoken to them or had done business with them. So they, they were mutual they just weren't hey let me connect with with right. somebody because i like what their their profile says but there's so much good information out there that if you search for it or you just happen to read the feed uh, i find it a very um beneficial part of my day and if i don't get to it every day i get to it at least once a week and can spend times on the weekend and whatnot if there's downtime i will scroll linkedin to see what i can garner from linkedin from not just business but even the personal stuff and then all the veteran stuff and the female business ownership stuff. There's so much inspiration. There's so much valuable information that help helps us all grow. Right. And connect. And I think connecting with other people is what makes us all successful without the connection. You're just out there in the world alone, trying to figure it out. Yeah. Especially, especially during COVID and everybody sitting home and not working in offices anymore. It definitely makes it really difficult. And I could say there's a lot of positive news stories on LinkedIn. Yes, yes. <laughs> there's a lot of positive stories on LinkedIn, not like the alternative or the other social media, <laughs> the other, stuff. other social media stuff. Yeah. No, the other stuff that's really that they're saying is endangering, you know, children and other people like that. I um, read that this past weekend, um, yeah. some of the studies and, and the analysis, um, right. which is a little worried because I grew up, we weren't connected, right? I'm old enough. We weren't connected. No, and no. There's moments now, just like going to the beach, disconnect. I need to right. disconnect a little bit and realize that uh, I'm not going to miss much. If I'm keeping on top of my life, my business, my family, I can take a couple of days and it'll all still be there when I get back. I agree. I agree. So um, well said. So well said. Well, Molly, listen, thank you so much for coming on. I really enjoyed it. I have a whole page of notes, as you see. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I appreciate it. And, and keep doing what you're doing, because I think this is valuable. I'm going to go promote. So when you see me sharing some of your stuff, yeah. please understand that um, I'm a big sharer when I believe that there's a viable solution, what you're doing is viable. And uh, I thank you for helping the small business community and involving me in what you do. I truly appreciate it. And I've loved chatting with you. And um, I'm going to try to make a point to chat with you some more. We'll connect. All right. All right. You thank have a you. good week. Thanks. You do the same. Enjoy thank fiscal you. year. Best. Enjoy end of fiscal year. I'm yes. planning on it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye now. Bye-bye.